This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. No. No. This is a sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. Welcome to DBL. Happy Monday, everybody. Stephanie Jones in the house down there. What's up, girl? S. Jones. Hi. Hello. Everyone. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I just like using an accent. That's horrendous. All right, let's get to it, guys. JLo has canceled her upcoming North American tour. She made the announcement in her embarrassing newsletter hey. saying she was taking time off. That two people up here are subscribed to that. Yeah, Jeff, that's our guys. business. <laughs> I don't want to blow up anybody's spot. They but the but it's not for your job. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. She said she canceled to be with her children, family, and close friends. In a statement to her fans, she said, quote, I am completely heart sick and devastated about letting you down. Please know that I wouldn't do this if I didn't feel it was absolutely necessary. She forgot the financially part. Mm. Mm. But some people online said low ticket sales are the real reason the tour was canceled, not her family. Speaking of which, Jen was spotted kissing Ben on the on his cheek outside his son's basketball game on Sunday, but some people said the kiss look awkward and forced. I'm going to kick it off and just say I'm team Ben and Jen. I'm going against the I grain. Like it. I don't like all the media hardship they put on this relationship. I really think that's part of why her ticket sales are down. I think the media has completely overhauled her image and incorporating her with Ben, and he's always miserable. I think that's the real reason. But what do you guys think? I think you're very I'm sure that's right. I also think she had not only a documentary about herself, mm. she had a tour, she had a, a movie come out. She, she was a bit overexposed for a while, and people get tired of it for some reason. Then the thing with Ben came out, and now the magnifying glass is on you. And she's only sold about, let's be honest, what, 10% of her tour? That ain't good. So uh, Heather McDonald, a comedian in front of the show, she has her own theory, and I want you guys to respond to this. Take a listen to this theory. The theory is, oh my God, they're going through all this marital trouble. That's why she's canceling it, so that she can work on her marriage. Now I'm thinking there were no marital problems, and this is something that they may have put out together um, to get everybody talking so that when she does cancel the tour, we don't think it's because it really was such low ticket sales. Kind of genius. And hey, if they stay together and she doesn't have to perform for a tenth of a house, can you blame her? What do you guys think? You think it's can, fake? Can you blame her stuff? Absolutely not. And I mean, I do think this is a decision that's way above JLo's hands. I do think she is heart sick and because imagine their ego hit that you will get knowing I've only sold 10% of my tour as a worldwide name that headed the Super Bowl only a few years ago. Bad. It is bad. I, I'm the only one out of all of us. I know Al subscribes. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm the only one openly that loves J-Lo and even I do see through some of J-Lo's stunts like for years I look so young because I rub olive oil on my face and I don't drink alcohol then she brings out an alcohol brand and now all of a sudden it's happy hour every day for on Instagram sure. <laughs> people didn't like that you're and, right you know, there's you're like right. little things like that that I don't think help her cause yeah. and I think people now Celebrities have got such transparency and you're seeing them without filters, without makeup, they're being so open and honest that her life, I think sometimes, that's why it gets so picked apart and people just aren't interested. She's not as authentic. I love J-Lo though. I'm rooting for her. I'm right. What yeah. song I think we do you like are. from J-Lo? I only like Waiting for Tonight. That's yeah. like 25, 30 years ago. It, it, it come out with a new song. <laughs> but it, she hasn't had anything recently no. that's super She's had. She point. has a movie out right now, that movie Atlas. Name it. Atlas. Atlas, uh, yeah. And what's it about? I mean, I just End like, do you world. know anyone who's it's watched it? Basically, it seems like uh, Avatar, basically, where she's like in one of those machines moving it around. Yeah. But you, neither here or there. <laughs> that I might have something to do with it. <laughs> yeah, <so. laughs> for sure. But I mean, it, it's not like <laughs> the fact that we could barely name her movie, the fact that, like, we're, we, I don't think it's the overexposure. I, you know, the more, this is one of those few topics where we talk about it during the break, and I've been thinking about it a lot. You have to kind of change and understand that your demo is roughly the same age as you, and kind of, if you feel like you might be aging out of certain markets and certain ways to do things, maybe you need to overhaul the way you do it. For example, I was working with a comic 15 years ago, Brett Butler, she was on Grace Under Fire. Yeah, I love Yeah, it. and I remember talking to her, and she's so funny off stage, and she was like, I do 5 p.m., Saturday shows because my audience is older oh. yeah. and you know at 10 o'clock Saturday night they're like we're 64 and my wife they can't you know yeah and so maybe JLo needs to fair. reinvent I'm not saying she needs to go there I'm, I'm saying maybe she needs to figure out who is still a fan I think because that's so true. she 
uh, really made an assumption about who her fans were, and there was a lot of empty arenas. So she needs to figure and out who I they are because they're out there. There's stuff. You got to think all day long. Tori has been singing a song "Expresso" by Sabrina Carpenter. Carpenter. She's like 23 yeah. years old or something, and you're like singing it. You're loving it. Yeah. Everyone's making dances on TikTok, and then you're sat there saying. JLo, who in my opinion is like superstar over Sabrina Carpenter, you're like, what does she say? Mm -hmm. And I do think that's right. I think she's like aged out. Yeah. I hate saying that about yeah. her. We all do but in I, entertainment. I do think that's true. Though, you and know? like now there's no new songs. Right. Younger people aren't like dancing to anything on TikTok. They don't even know who she is. Right. They don't care. Wow. Right. Maybe so a sad. Vegas residency is her thing. You know, maybe that's not so Apparently like that's been taken tour. away from her too. She'll bring it back. She, oh. she, she's, she'll be back. Speaking of concerts, some performers were caught stopping their shows in order to help their fans. So first, during his show in Austin, Texas, Justin Timberlake tried to alert security about a fan who seemingly needed assistance. He then stopped and asked the house lights to come on. Let's watch. House lights up. House lights up. Thank you. Sorry, everybody. One second. One second. We need some assistance right here about five rows back. Are we okay? No, no problem. Okay, we're okay. Well, he's got to do something, hasn't he? Because everyone's over for him, aren't they? Oh, he's kind of like J-Lo. But he's yeah. selling out. He's selling out Yeah, that, shows. that place was packed. I'm just over this whole stopping the show for a rando concept. <gasps> that is their business. Your business is to be on stage entertaining the other 39,000 people. I don't think that that's are, true. Why are you stopping your show? That is not your look job. Look at this. Watch your this job is to security. I, you have a, you look, I think that's one. enough, though. I do I do think that's enough. He's making it very apparent. Yeah. I don't think we need to turn all the lights on. He, the send. person was fine. Can you guys play yeah. the pink one? Let me just show you this. You can do it while still having the concert. Watch it. She's still singing. Yeah, exactly. That's that. enough. That's enough. I think Brilliant. That, Brilliant. Yeah. Just keep going. But that's the Al's point. Make, right. Yeah, don't make a big scene because I do think it turns a bit into a publicity stunt at that point. Yeah, I agree with Why you. Why do you think we're doing three in a row? That, because they have definitely been directed as entertainers to like, if you see something, call that out because it's good for your brand. Yeah. This used to be like a once, a, and I said this is going to become a trend. Y when you, I world, have performed right. in exactly. many yeah. venues, especially I've done a lot of theaters. When you go to theaters, when you go backstage, they always say don't touch a light socket, don't unplug anything, because that is a union person's job. That is what they are there to do. You are there to tell jokes, buddy. And when you start plugging things in or unplugging or telling the security what to do, you're kind of in a weird way saying somebody's not doing their job. No, you I, can get somebody I, can jammed up doing really that. Quick? You, you're, you're, because you're on the stage, you have a, a singular optic way of seeing the entire thing, and JT and whatever, Pink, could see something that no one else could see, and in that responsibility of being on stage, you sort of want to take care of the people that I do think Pink handled that ten times more professionally, and it was more genuine and sincere. Yeah. She didn't stop singing, she alerted the security guard yeah. it was dealt with, whereas Justin's like, turn on all the lights, everybody, let's stop the show. <laughs> yeah. I think the person was completely fine. Yeah, I think they're worried about Astro World, which killed people, of remember, course. with um, tra what is Travis Scott. Travis, Travis Scott. Scott. Excuse me, I was going to say That Smith. was a failure of the fire department and anybody who's doing tickets. That was not on Travis. Right, right. But and again, that. But his name is associated with that. And I think the reverse of that is what we're seeing now, where the uh, oh, entertainer is trying to be yeah. like, I've got this, and you don't. That's that security guard's job. Mm -hmm. If he messes up, he or she messes up, that's on them and their boss. That has nothing to do with you, JT. I think was it was singular good. optic on your bingo card? Man, she was ready for that one. Yes? Singular. One optic? <laughs> <Not> <laughs> One optic. Coming up on ZBL, our interview with Donny Osmond, singular. <laughs> he will, will he ever work with Marie on stage again? Ooh, there you go. There's two now. And Maya Hawk is talking about why she doesn't mind being called the Nepo baby. Looking forward to this conversation next.
Welcome back to DBL. Maya Hawk is leaning into being a so-called Nepo baby. So Maya told the Times of London, not the London Times, the Times of London, mm -hmm. that she had an easier time in Hollywood because of her famous parents, Ethan Hawke and Uma Thurman. But she says she doesn't mind being caught, she doesn't mind being made fun of because she recognize, recognizes how lucky she really is. She also admitted she got a role in Quentin Tarantino's film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood because her mom's connections, even though she previously said she auditioned for the part. Uma's worked with Tarantino on Kill Bill films and Pulp Fiction. Yeah, this is bit. You know what? If you look into a majority of actors, I will say there is some sort of connection, one way or the other, family-wise. Mm -hmm. What about a majority of cops, firefighters, plumbers? But here, they're usually like, oh, this is my, my dad. I come from four generations of proud Irish firefighters. Like everybody, kind of does what your family does. I feel like that's more normal than not. But. I, I get that argument too, but here's my pushback on that. When you're in sports, right, it's the best athlete out there. You're playing the best guy, not because your dad was LeBron James. Well, in his case, he might have got drafted because his dad was LeBron James, but he's got to perform on the court mm -hmm. and do that. You're not necessarily the best plumber in the world just because your dad owned a plumbing company. There might be someone better than you. Shouldn't we ask that we put the best actors on the screen just like we put our athletes on the field? Or is it just because you have a foot in the business? But I, I do oh, think what, what, what happens in this situation is they do get a foot in the door, they do get a chance, but if they flop in that, we do not see them again. And I, I do think that. I do think that they'll get given a little bit of a chance. Maya's a good actress. I've seen her in you. a few things, and I actually do think she's worthy to be in what she's in. I agree, you get a chance, and if you're not going to make yeah, it, you, you don't, don't stick. Yeah, if you don't make it, if you can't remember your lines, if you're not on time, if you're not selling out, or if you it doesn't work, the movie doesn't work, you're not getting rebooked. Yeah, but I, I, I do, I, I could try as hard as I want to be in the NFL, as hard as I want, and I can't, right? Mm. My athletic abilities just aren't there, but it's my dream. I did three movies. If I could do a movie, anybody could do a movie. I'm just saying. <laughs> so all you need is that connection and a foot in the door to get on that screen. I'm saying it's a lot easier than going to the, uh, uh, like a, a professional athlete. Right, and anything is just your foot in the door. Like you said, sometimes it's your parents. Sometimes it's big brother. Anything to just be right. like, hey, I'm a person. Right. Please, to get me that one audition where I didn't get the part I wanted, but then I got this other part, and now I, I met somebody and they know a guy that might... Uh, this is all kind of, you, you're just trying to piece together a career, and there's no blueprint for everybody. And I think most people, whether if your dad was an attorney and you found out that th th his son was an attorney, well, his son was probably going to court with him. I was his son was probably, probably right. observing right. from a young age how saying. to install air conditioning if that's what your uh, mom did. You're Go seeing the these things. It makes right. sense. Yeah, you're a theater if kid. You're like, if you're um, some, yeah, I was just going to agree with Al. So well, I you grew up, your mom was an art docent, and mm -hmm. now you talk about it. Yeah, and I definitely want to do that. And I also think that when you grow up in that world, your genetics are going to be artistic as well. Well, just, yeah, that was a good conversation. We, we're out of time, unfortunately. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. Donny Osmond is a music legend. He has sold more than 100 million records and performed around the globe for six decades. Very impressive. Earlier, we spoke with him about his tour and if he will ever perform with Marie again. Take a look. Please welcome back Donny Osmond. Yes. How are you? Hello. We are great. Nice to see you guys. Great to see you. Before we get started, Donnie, we want to wish you and Debbie a happy belated anniversary. 46 years. That wow. is something to celebrate. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I found a wonderful woman. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about your award winning show in Vegas. You have a very unique audience interaction. I love this so much for you and the fans. Fans actually get to pick a song from one of your 65 album collections and you perform it right there and then. Yes, it's I call it the request segment. It's it's a kind of a bold thing to do because it's pretty much improv every night. Uh, all 65 albums, as you see right there, uh, and anyone in the audience can pick any song from any album and we do it just like that. So the show changes every night. Mm, I like the I dance moves. I love how he knows every part of his catalog so well. Mm -hmm. All right, Donnie, in 1973, you were touring in Europe, you landed in London, and there was a situation. And now you're banned from Heathrow <laughs> Airport. You gotta fill in the blanks. What happened? Did you trash something? Like, what happened? No, it was the amount of fans that showed up at the airport and the hysteria that took place. They called it Osmond Mania back then. And so they banned us from the airport. We had to fly into Scotland and take wow. a secret train into London to actually get into uh, into the area. Wow. It was it was a crazy time. And, and that's that's just one of the things that I highlight on my show is that period of time, uh, Dancing with the Stars, when I won that, the, the Masked Singer, I debuted the Masked mass Singer, all of these things in one show. It's six decades of entertainment in one show. It's wow. it's pretty cool. If there's a Mount Rushmore for show business, yes. the old show business, you're on it, my friend. For sure. You are on it. <laughs> but let, for sure. No, no. Sure. People don't appreciate I accept. that. I accept. There you go. There you go. So your show Vegas Bound, I have to talk about this, has some rap elements in it. What inspired you to add some rap? And you know I'm going to ask you if you could spit us a couple lines. Ooh. I'll, I'll give you the first part. It all began back in Utah. I was four years old, started singing with my brothers, and the sound was like gold. So my folks took a leap and said, what the hey? We got to get these monsters out to California. And it goes on and on and on yeah. for like 10 minutes. Yeah. And everything yeah. I talk about, you actually see visually. And uh, it's become one of the fan favorites. Uh, of, of the show over the years. There is nothing you can't do, my friend. All right, you and Marie have such a long history of performing together. Will we ever see you two work together again? Who knows? I mean, at this point in time, I've done this show business thing for so long, you never say never. But there's no plans, obviously, because uh, what we did at the Flamingo and the, and the, the residency we had there went for 11 years. It was supposed to be six weeks and went for 11 years. Wow. So, um, I kind of miss working with her, but we both decided to go our separate ways and do our own separate careers. So cool. Uh, Donnie, I have to ask you, with nine siblings, you must have a tight bond. However, however, I do, oh. I, yeah, I, do have to, I do have to say one thing. Uh, there is one very special moment in this this show of mine. At, uh, at the very end, Close to the end, I do a tribute to Marie and the Donnie and Marie show. I have chosen some of my most favorite moments of the two of us together, and I do it, but uh, uh, there are places I remember, oh and it's such a beautifully put together uh, video presentation. It's very tear jerking. I was going to uh, say, you need it's, some tissue. It's a tissue. really cool thing at the very end. Yeah, yeah in fact, is he, aren't your parents going to Vegas this weekend? For the first time ever, my parents are visiting, helping out, and they're going to Vegas. They need to go see Maybe Donnie. you could talk to our producer, Bert, and we can work something <laughs> out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not going to be there. I'm about ready to start a big tour. <laughs> oh, I'm going All right. In fact, that's uh, a good excuse. It's 46 cities uh, in just about two months. All the information is on Donnie.com. Uh, I, I want people to see this award winning show, and I'm taking the entire show, not just an abbreviated portion of the show, the entire Las Vegas 
production is traveling wow. for the next two months wow. or so all across the country. Unbelievable. Ooh. It sounds like a show we can't miss. Donnie, so it is cool. always so good to see you. Thank you for joining us. DBL Nation, Donnie is taking his Vegas show on the road and his tour is starting this June. You can find more information about both of his shows on Donnie.com. Thank you again, Donnie. Congratulations. Great to see you. Thanks. We'll be right back. Thanks, you guys. The Caribbean is calling you. Hey. This June, we're celebrating Caribbean Heritage Month with Sandals by giving away two all-inclusive vacations to any Sandals resort of your choice. Watch DBL every day for Word of the Day. Then enter at dailyglasslive.com slash sandals for your chance to win a four-day, three-night escape for two. The winner will be announced on DBL June 26th. Make memories for a lifetime and start entering for your chance to win a trip to any Sandals Resort. Today's word of the day is beaches. Welcome back. Did you know core strength is the most important part of keeping your body healthy as you age? Stronger abs and back muscles can prevent falls and improve balance to keep your joints from getting damaged. So do you guys work your core out when you guys work out every time? You try to? I try to. 
I try to because I do realize that when like when you're getting older and you're trying to get up, if you use your core and mm -hmm. engage it, it's so much easier and safer than your than that. So I'm gonna work harder on my core. You yeah. do. I do. I try to. I try even if it's flimsy, like on the ball or something. But yeah. it's all your core, right? right? Even your posture and everything comes. Yeah, from my your posture's core. terrible. What about you, Steph? I'm going to stare. I feel like the spotlight. Oh, Steph, no. tell us your ab workout. What is your abs? Doing? I know. Um, I do whatever my teacher. I honestly am useless. I do whatever my teacher tells me. I go to a class. Literally, I think that's whatever the best they way tell to do me. It. Yeah. There I don't you know go. what I'm doing. Don't listen to me for fitness advice because you won't <laughs> get nothing worth doing. All right, while you are building strength in your muscles, don't forget to support your joints. Something that can help is Omega XL. It's a powerful joint support that's helped millions of consumers and is backed by 30 years of clinical research. Omega XL's powerful and proven benefits have transformed the lights of athletes, celebrities, and dedicated daily users. Call 800 814 6985 or visit OmegaXL.com for more information. I read that really. Really fast, and yeah, they have 15 have seconds time. left. Well, we I was just saying, <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I well, all need to sign up for Steph's fitness class because I just want to be in there. I, I don't. Steph, Steph's oh, got I some. Those people are crazy. Cool, honestly, I would just recommend we all go get coffee instead. All right, <laughs> see you tomorrow. I can drink. Oh.